Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Career Chat. I'm Krista Harmon, one of the Career Readiness Consultants with the Kent Intermediate School District. I'm so delighted to have Jasmine Weston. She is a Education and Training Manager with us today. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you. So, Jasmine, our young people love to know how adults got started in their careers. And if you take us back to when you were 16 or 17, did you think you'd grow up to be an Education and Training Manager? What were you thinking back then? Yeah, so the answer is absolutely not. Um, when I was 16 or 17, um, I truly had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I felt kind of left out because there were a lot of people who had something to point to and they wanted to be a teacher, they wanted to be a nurse, and I didn't have anything like that. And it caused me a lot of anxiety, especially when I got to high school, because as you know, the pressure really ramps up to figure it out and you got to know what you're going to do. And um, especially when you get to be a junior and a senior, everybody starts telling you their ideas for what they think you should do. Um, you know, and I had people tell me I should be a secretary and, um, you know, all kinds of crazy things that like just didn't sound interesting to me. So, um, you know, it took me it took me a long time to become I started college not knowing what I wanted to do. It took me a long time to become OK with that. Um, and I figured it out along the way. Great. So when you think back to high school, you must have had some skill sets that maybe people were identifying in you even at the time if they were um, maybe noticing how organized you were. So They're suggesting things like um, secretary. And I'm sure that will come out um, as you share more about your yeah. job. So when you went off to college, how did you even know what major to pick? Or did you just go in as an undecided and let it uh, kind of evolve from there? Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so when I was about a senior, I decided largely because everyone kept asking, I just have to pick a major. And I knew that you could change your major even up to a couple years into college. So I chose a communication uh, major. And that was because, uh, like Krista said, those were the skills that I knew I was strong in. So um, I was a very strong writer all throughout high school. I read constantly, um, which really did help with uh, being a strong writer. And uh, I was also good at public speaking and communicating with people. So um, since I knew that I was uh, gifted in those areas, I thought I'll pick this general degree. And um, you know, from my research, I could see that having a general degree like a business degree or a communication degree can lead you in a lot of different pathways. And since I didn't know what I wanted to do, that made me feel better that I wasn't locking myself into one specific narrow degree. Yeah, and I think that's so wise for so many young people. Certainly if they know they wanna be an accountant or they want to be a physician, there are very specific degrees, but for people yeah. um, who aren't sure, I love that you kept yourself marketable. And I also love that you identified those strengths and went with a major that was going to now take that to the next level and enhance that. So young people, listen to that, um, just her experience, that wisdom of looking at who you are, what you already have naturally uh, gifted in, and then take it to the next level. So you went to, um, what college did you go to? And how did you even decide what school then would be a good fit yeah. for you? Um, I went to Aquinas College, um, which is right here in Grand Rapids. Uh, I decided, um, I think probably like most of you, through um, talking to people and uh, going on visits mostly, that was the, you know, the part that made the biggest impact on me. So I toured a bunch in the area and um, Aquinas felt right for me because um, it was a very uh, caring and small community that felt like a family. Um, I toured larger universities and um, they were cool, but I couldn't see myself um, just being one of maybe a hundred students in a lecture hall. And, you know, and I saw that the class sizes at Aquinas were typically never more than 30 students. Um, you know, I knew that I would know all the names of the people in my classes and all my professors would know who I was. Um, and that was really appealing to me. Terrific. When you uh, went off to college, then you started with this communications degree. When did you start to go, this is a good fit, or did you have any other stress in that time of really owning that? Tell us about some of that early part of college experience and, and maybe even some yeah. things that you did to cement it. Sure. Um, so I certainly still had anxiety, um, especially as I'd say a freshman and a sophomore. Um, even though I had picked a degree, um, sometimes when you make a decision, you just move forward, but you're still you're still going to have doubt about it. And um, the best you can do is, is move forward with the information you have 
at that time. That was the information I had at the time. Um, you know, people ask me constantly, like, what does a communication major even do? Um, and sometimes before people knew that I was a communication major, like I would hear people making jokes about, I can't imagine if I was a communication major, like what would you ever do with that degree? So there was definitely a lot of that um, that I had to face, uh, especially in the first couple of years. Um, but by the time I got towards the end of my program, honestly, I, I looked at the people that were in me within these classes and I could see that I was really good at it and um, that it was came naturally to me and I excelled in it. And I thought, you know, this is right. Even if it's not something that gives me an exact endpoint career, um, this is something I can build a general skill that is absolutely needed no matter what job you want to pursue in the future. Becoming a strong writer, strong verbal communicator is uh, and, and public speaker is absolutely going to set you apart from your peers. And every single company needs people with communication skills. Every single company, every single industry. I love it too that you talked about that you didn't necessarily have an endpoint because I think there's a lot of anxiety from young people to have that endpoint figured yeah. out. And I love that your story is already sharing that it doesn't have to be that way. You're filling your toolbox with tools so that you can be marketable to a variety of things. And so I hope that young people will hear that. And, and the fact is that many of your jobs may not exist, young people. Things are changing all the time. So to hook it onto an occupation isn't necessarily wise. Right. So you graduate with this accounting degree. And while you were in college, did you do any volunteer work, any internships? Tell us about those experiences that really helped build your kind of knowledge of maybe what was out there too. Yeah. Um, so I ended up picking up a second major when I was a junior. Um, and I added community leadership, which is essentially like nonprofit administration. Um, I had always been a really mission driven person. And what I mean by that is um, causes were important to me. So, you know, I really cared about helping people in my community. I cared about the environment. I cared about animals. Um, and so I started as I was in college and started taking some uh, general education courses. I took one about community leadership and um, what it means to uh, serve your community and contribute to um, the place that you live. And it inspired me to add a second major in that. Um, and one of the other reasons I did that was to increase my marketability. I didn't know if I would end up working in the nonprofit sector or the for-profit sector. So um, I honestly figured I'd be covered either way if I added both of those on. So that's why I ended up doing that. And then um, through that major, I really did get out in the community um, and through a variety of experiences, because that's kind of the point of the program. You, they want you to be out doing something uh, that you might do when you graduate and have that job. So um, my focus was literacy in that program. So I uh, tutored for um, English language learners at the uh, Dominican Center and did that for a semester. And then I also interned for a semester at the Literacy Center of West Michigan um, and did a lot of work for them, which um, was so fun. It was honestly enjoyable to tutor people. I, I went into it thinking I'm doing this internship, but I ended up having a really good time um, helping people learn. And, you know, that also connected with my love of language and helping other people become successful in that area. So, um, you know, it really tied together a lot of my interests. And I just love that, too, that that hands on experience of, you know, tutoring, you really got to help people. And again, that was matching up to your values because you were very much a cause driven person. And, you know, for young people, if you don't try these things, how will you ever know if something like that's a good fit for you? So I just I just admire that, Jasmine, that you were doing those active things and you were getting clues then along the way, right? Yeah, it uh, helps you, you might... and it helps them. Yeah, exactly. And so here you've, you discover you have a little bit of a teacher's heart. And that's why we're thrilled to have you on this series, because teaching doesn't happen just in a classroom, a four wall classroom. So here you discover that you really love to help people. You've been teaching some of this ESL. So where was that next step then right out of college? What happened with uh, your journey? Yeah, so um, I graduated still, you know, what do I do? What's next for me? So I started just applying, applying, applying. I applied to nonprofits. I applied to for-profits. 
And, um, you know, this is a common thing that lots of people do when they graduate. They just, their career can kind of be determined, at least in the beginning, by who hires you first. So um, that's what happened to me. I got hired um, at a small um, startup company. We did um, IT and technical um, project management. So I ended up being in, like a project manager. Um, and so a lot of my organization skills um, became very important. I was leading um, implementation of services and scheduling calls with multiple different parties, making sure people understood what was happening, um, helping people come to agreement when there were maybe three different vendors involved and no one could agree on whose job it was to fix this um, or you know how we should get this done. Uh, so I landed there and I was there for about two years. And again, if someone would have said to you as an 18 year old, would you like to be a project manager? That wouldn't have meant anything to you, right? And so no, these experiences that you're having in college and the skill set that you're developing now made you marketable that someone at this company could see your skill sets and helped you into a, a like a lane that you didn't even know existed. Right. So were, yeah. yeah. So you were there and again in an IT environment, a technical environment, which you probably hadn't anticipated. So right. after two years, um, where did your journey take you? Yeah. So um, I started to realize about maybe a year, a little after a year in that I really wasn't happy doing that work. Um, sure, I was good at it and I was meeting success requirements. So, you know, I was a good employee, but it was not fulfilling to me. and. Um, you know, it took me a long time to acknowledge that um, it was okay to leave because I was raised very much, you know, you put in your hardest work and your best effort and you don't quit. You keep trying um, and that's how you get success. That is certainly true. But, um, you know, one thing I learned in that job was you also have to know um, when to walk away and you know if there are things that don't align with your values or what you even just prefer for yourself what you enjoy doing um it's okay to quit it's okay even if you've only been there less than a year um you know keep your opportunities open don't burn bridges um you know do so professionally but um it's okay to walk away and say this wasn't for me uh, you're never going to have a better time than in your 20s to explore different jobs. Um, you know, when you're young, you often don't have as many um, responsibilities in a specific location. So you might not own a house. You may not be married. You may not have children. Um, you may not have other financial liabilities that you'll probably accumulate as you get older. So it's a really great time to just try stuff. And um, for someone like me who is, you know, very uh, driven to succeed and never quit, it was hard to admit like, okay, this isn't the career for me. It's time to try something new. Yeah, but it's so fantastic. And uh, that, I would just love to capture that whole conversation because that okay to leave and that you have to really um, do that self-assessment of this part's working, this part's not. I've learned this. I'm, I want to go there. And that you have choices because so many young yes. people feel like what they're deciding, they're going to be locked in for the rest of their lives. And I love, Jasmine, that you've demonstrated that you have choices and you can professionally leave a job and go on to the next thing of maybe something you learned about yourself that you know you might do. Mm -hmm. So was there something in that teaching that you're like, man, I'm not helping people the way I want to at this yeah. time? Is that what kind of drew you away then? Yeah, exactly. So I, I really didn't feel like I was making an impact, which... Um, that was really important to me. So I started looking elsewhere. Um, and I'll mention too, like the other thing that led me to that decision is um, not so much the work that I was doing, but I wasn't getting the support that I wanted as an employee. So, um, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of professional development opportunities. And when you're 22 years old, you need professional development opportunities. You need to learn everything you can learn. Um, so, you know, I, I realized, hey, like I could be getting so much more out of a job than what I'm getting. Um, the other thing too being, you know, often when you're 22, I wish somebody had told me what was normal to make in a first job. Um, you know, I didn't ask anyone, hey, does this sound like a good offer? And I realized maybe a year in, it was a terrible offer. I was making terrible money. 
and that there were a lot better opportunities where I could not only be happier and do something that I was interested in, but I could be making better money and have a better lifestyle for myself too. So I took what I learned there um, and I eventually went to work for National Heritage Academies. Um, those are our charter schools in our area. And so I was now in the education realm, um, but in HR, human resources. Um, so that was much more a helping profession. So one of the reasons why I picked HR was um, at Aquinas, a lot of, they didn't have a specifically HR major. So what a lot of people did was they majored in communication and they took HR focused classes and then that enabled them to apply for entry level HR positions. So what I did is I thought, you know, I have this degree. It qualifies me to work in HR. I've always wondered, would I like it or would I not like it? I had no idea, but I was 24 years old and I thought this is the time to try it. So I gave it a shot um, and I was there for two years and I picked up tons of tons of knowledge and information that I never would have if I had stayed put uh, where I was. Yeah, and again, if you're an 18-year-old and someone said, Jasmine, how about the major of human resources? Again, that wouldn't have meant anything to you at the time. No. And so again, your communication skills and experiences, again, are really filling that toolbox where this company felt, yeah, you can do this HR with a communication degree, right? Yeah. Um, and I love it now that you're in the education environment because, again, you had that heart, that teacher's heart when you were doing the ESL stuff. Um, so then how did you make that move? Because again, I think a lot of young people don't understand what education and training is or training and development. So I'm so excited yeah. they can hear about that. So how did you make that next transition? Yeah, so what I realized uh, while I was doing HR was that I very much did not enjoy a lot of the aspects of HR, like filling out a lot of paperwork and dealing with problems with people. Um, and I did really enjoy what I call the, like fun aspects of HR. So fun to me was training people how to do their job. Fun to me was helping um, orient them when they were new and getting them all set up to be successful um, in our company. I enjoyed doing that. And also um, I noticed that my onboarding and the way that I was trained to do my job really wasn't that great. And I thought I could do this better. Um, what would I want when I started this job? Um, and what would have been helpful to me to know that I had to learn by myself? Um, and can I take that and use it to make it better for the next people that come on board? So that's what I found that I really did enjoy. Um, and that's what led me um, to my current role um, as an education and training manager. So um, I currently work at the West Michigan Construction Institute, um, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So I really felt when I made that move that it kind of brought my interest full circle because not only was I in education, but I was back where my heart kind of had always been pulling me, which was nonprofit and, and mission driven work. I just love, I love hearing people's career paths. It's so fascinating, Jasmine. And I love that you had said earlier after your first job, you realized you didn't have an opportunity for PD or professional development. And now you're in a position to help make that happen at yeah. organizations. I just, yeah. I just love how all those pieces, and again, young people be encouraged. All those early jobs, you're putting things in your toolbox to eventually getting closer and closer to what's really a great fit. Um, my career went that same, that same way. I would have felt I was off course, but everything I was learning was heading somewhere. And yeah. so here you are at a construction industry too, which again, as a young person, right? You, if someone said, would you like to work in construction? You would have been like, what? Absolutely and, not. Exactly. So uh, tell us what your um, typical day might like be so young people can understand what this kind of role is about. Yeah, so um, this is my third industry in six years. So, um, you know, it was a lot of different, every time I switched jobs, I had a lot of, um, new information, new terminology, um, new practices and what was normal in the industry to learn. Um, so I came came here and I had no idea what was normal here. I just figured it all out. Um, but yeah, what's become normal for me is um, my job is really to help uh, make really great programs uh, for specifically our adult students. So overall at um, WMCI, we have um, Students come to us to learn how to uh, perform a skilled trade. Skilled trade is work like um, being a carpenter, being an electrician, being an estimator, being
being an architect. All of those fall under skilled trades and construction. So we have high school students that come here um, much as they would go to KCTC and be in a culinary program or the residential construction program at KCTC. They come here to learn what career in construction might I be interested in? So a lot of times they have no idea also. So they come here to help figure it out. Um, my role is to manage our adult training. So we also have a wide range of ages. Um, we've got people who are around your age. They you know, are graduating. Maybe they've just graduated the last year. They have no idea what they want to do. So they enroll for a semester um, and just figure out what it's all about. Um, and then we've got uh, people that have been in this industry for 20, 30 years, and they just need to learn how to do a new skill um, that maybe will get them a pay raise. Um, so if I get this certification, I can make $5 extra an hour, whatever that might be. So um, I really work to find out what are those programs that people need in our area and how can I bring them here uh, to help our learners. And so again, I hear those communication skills and all the coordinating skills and just everything coming together. I love it. And I just wanted to point out something you had said just a, a few minutes ago for young people to hear that you figured it out. You, you were new to construction, but you figured it out. And that is the attitude, young people, you must have because no training um, opportunity or college is going to teach you everything you need to know. You're going to learn on the job, right? Um, what would you want them to know, Jasmine, about that figuring it out and taking initiative and um, anything along that line that you'd like to just share from your own experiences? Yeah, um, I think that when I was in this, it didn't make sense to me that I was going in a particular direction. You know, I'm telling you about it now from hindsight. And now it sounds really serendipitous and like, of course it all worked out and every, all the pieces connected. It did not feel like that when it was happening. Um, when I was 22 years old, and I truly was hating going to work every single day. I thought, what am I doing? What, you know, what is the point of this? What, what am I doing with my life? Um, and then I, I was brave and I left that job and I tried something completely new that I had no experience in, which um, I started that and I thought, okay, I don't like a lot of this either. So what's next? You know, am I ever going to find something that I enjoy? Um, and so, you know, eventually I, I took what I could from those jobs and um, I learned, uh, especially from that first job, again, when to move on and that it's totally okay to do that. In fact, it's great to do that because generally you're the one it's going to help. Um, you're going to take, you're going to get new skills, you're going to bring them to your next job, you're going to be more marketable. And um, often when you change jobs, you have um, a higher value to a new company than a company you may have been with. And so often you can uh, make more money doing that too. Not that that's the only reason you should change a job, but um, like I said, I, I didn't have people that were telling me what was normal and what I should be asking for. Um, so all of that I learned along the way and um, it just, it doesn't feel that way when you're in it. Um, but you know, once you become okay with not knowing and just doing the best with the information that you have wherever you are um, and anything, any place you are, you can make successful as long as you have that mindset. Yeah, I love that you're normalizing the angst. A-N-G-S-T, young people, it's angst is the word and it's that uncomfortable, what am I doing? How am I gonna figure this out? I distinctly remember that Jasmine and it is awful when you're in it, but you keep moving forward. That's the key everyone as you're hearing Jasmine's doing. Uh, we have about five minutes left, Jasmine. I'd like to find out what the favorite part of your job is and maybe what the least favorite part is. Sure. So um, what I enjoy most is helping people get a skill that lets them do a job that they enjoy doing. And what's also really important to me is that um, careers in construction um, are very often um, highly paid what we call living wage job. A living wage job is something that the money you make allows you to live your life without needing your parents to help fill your gas tank or um, you, you need to apply for government assistance just to eat or um, you know to pay your rent. So the money that you make from your job allows you to do the basic necessities of life. Um, that's really important to me because a lot of people do not have living wage jobs. 
And when you do not have a living wage job, it impacts absolutely every aspect of your life. Everything is harder. So um, when I get to um, help develop programs that give people who are my age um, or people who might be 30s, 40s, and they're making a really brave career change, um, when I can help introduce them to a job that will give them that better life, that makes me feel really good. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the least favorite part? Um, you know, frankly, I do not enjoy scheduling meetings and uh, I do a lot of that constantly. Um, I'm, you know, I am primarily in the office all the time and part of my job is I talk to people all the time. I'm talking to students, helping them solve problems. I'm talking to companies, finding out what kind of classes do you need um, and community partners. So there's a lot of just logistical scheduling and I feel like I'm perpetually setting up meetings and, and organizing all of that. Um, but again, it's it's something I can do, I'm good at. It's just uh, not my favorite part of the day. And that's what that person way back when that said you should be a secretary, they definitely saw your skill sets. I love yeah, it. they didn't have it 100% wrong. Right, they, they, they were seeing something in you. I'm gonna give you a, a second to think about um, a final word of wisdom, but I did wanna point out this website that um, is such a great resource for young people, byfbuildyourfuture.org. And go ahead and give a, the five cent spiel on why people should check this website out. Yeah, so this is a resource specifically for students um, focused on skilled trades careers. So you can come here, you can take a quiz that will tell you hey, this is the skilled trade that you might be most um, equipped for, you might enjoy doing. You can look up every trade there is. It'll tell you, hey, if you like to be outside, if you like to solve problems, if you like details or you don't like details, this is the kind of career that might be good for you. Um, it'll tell you how much you'll make, what a typical work environment is, um, and has a lot of other, just if you poke around, really great resources. So it's kind of one place to answer all your questions about skilled trades career. Yeah, and I think that's great for the school counselors on the call today that they have Absolutely. this additional resource. So thank you. So what's that final word wisdom and encouragement to these young people who are exploring? Yeah, um, I think um, for me, what's been the most valuable thing I've learned is um, don't be so afraid to make mistakes. When I started my first job, I was terrified of making mistakes. Um, you know, I was so careful. I checked everything I did twice or sometimes three times. And um, we're all human, we all make mistakes and that is okay. Nobody really knows 100% what they're doing, nobody, even if they look like they do. So, um, you know, be brave if you make a mistake, just be honest about it. And as long as you take that, what you learn and you make, you use that for your next, uh, your next adventure, uh, you will be successful. Love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, you've been a fantastic uh, career, role model today, Jasmine. And you've gotten lots of love coming in that chat. Um, so thanks for being here today. Thanks for making yeah. time to be with of us. Of course.